is Germany flirting with the political autocracy in its move to ban the AFD, murder of democracy, a democratic paradox in the heart of Europe, a contentious case of the AFD in Germany. When well, the streets of Germany erupt over the AFD's threatened ban, are we witnessing the end of German pluralism, a litmus test for German democratic ideals? Is this the new German political reality? Can Germany uphold democracy while silencing dissent? Who determines democracy's boundaries in Germany? Welcome to TFI Global, the antidote to mass delusion. The trajectory of mainstream German political parties' responses to the rise of the Alternative for Germany or AFD mirrors the psychological framework of the five stages of grief denial bargaining anger depression and acceptance initially there was a phase of denial with many within the political establishment underestimating the afd's potential impact and longevity on the political stage as the afd gained seats and influence the sentiment shifted to anger with pointed criticisms and public denunciations of the party's platform and rhetoric. The bargaining phase saw mainstream parties attempting to co-opt some of the AFD's issues, particularly on immigration, to recapture the electorates, a strategy that has had mixed results and has not stemmed the AFD's momentum. Presently, the sentiment could be described as akin to depression, wherein there is a realization that the previous strategies have not halted AFT's ascendancy, leading to a somber introspection within established parties about how to realign their strategies and reconnect with voters. The stage is marked by a sense of political inertia and disillusionment as parties grapple with the shifting sands of voter alliances and the challenge of addressing the root causes that have fueled the AFT's rise while adhering to their core principles and values. So the coalition of depressed mainstream German parties have done the unthinkable. The Saxony-Anhalt chapter of the Alternative for Germany party has been designated by state-level intelligence authorities as a right-wing extremist group. This designation aligns the chapter with a status that subjects it to heightened surveillance. This move by the intelligence community in Saxony-Anhalt is the culmination of an ongoing debate about the party's ideological orientation and its compatibility with the free democratic basic order, as articulated by Jochen Holman, the head of Saxony-Anhalt's office for the protection of the constitution. The AFD has been accused of engaging in Islamophobic, anti-Semitic and racist rhetoric. These allegations have been at the forefront of a narrative that has positioned the party in a contentious light within the political discourse of Germany. According to intelligence authorities, the language used by the AFD when referring to migrants as invaders, intruders and culturally alien supply migrants violates the principle of human dignity as enshrined in German constitutional values. The party's supporters and members, however, may see such accusations as indicative of the political threat the AFT poses to the established parties. From this perspective, the classification could be viewed as a strategic effort to curb the growing influence of the AFT, which has seen a substantial increase in its support base most notably in three states of the former East Germany, Thuringia, Brandenburg and Saxony, where it polls around 35%. The regional elections in these states in 2024 are likely to be a significant test for the AFT's political reach. It is also relevant to consider the broader context in which these developments are occurring. The AFD has been gaining traction in state elections as evidenced by its recent gains in Bavaria and Hesse. Such successes naturally elicit responses from other political entities, including concern from Chancellor Olaf Scholz about the AFD's momentum. This could be perceived as reflective 
of a broader apprehension within the traditional political spectrum about the rising popularity of the AFD. The AFD in its counter-narrative may dispute the extremity of the categorization, asserting that it reflects the challenging of the political status quo rather than a departure from democratic principles. The case of the AFD in Saxony-Anhalt is not isolated, as it follows the 2021 classification of the Thuringia AFD chapter as right-wing extremist. While such classifications by state authorities have legal and operational implications, including surveillance and intelligence gathering, they also contribute to a polarized political debate over the interpretation of democratic values and political pluralism. In German politics, where the shadow of history looms large, discussions about political extremism are inherently sensitive and laden with significance. The robustness of Germany's democratic institutions is often measured by their capacity to integrate a broad spectrum of political opinions while simultaneously safeguarding against ideologies that may threaten the democratic fabric. In this context, the actions taken by intelligence authorities as well as the resulting public discourse must navigate the fine line between vigilance against extremism and the preservation of political diversity. Ultimately, the case of the AFD in Saxony and Hult, and indeed in the broader German political landscape, raises complex questions about the nature of political expression, the boundaries of acceptable discourse, and the mechanisms by which democratic societies protect their core values while accommodating dissenting voices. The inception of the Alternative for Germany in 2013 marked the emergence of a new player on the German political stage, initially focused on opposing the Eurozone's bailouts and advocating for the dissolution of the Euro. The party quickly pivoted to a platform addressing immigration and the perceived effects of Islamization. In its nascent stage, the AFD was regarded by the establishment as a marginal entity, unlikely to make lasting waves in the German political system. However, the 2014 European elections served as a turning point. AFD's success, garnering 7% of the vote, crystallized a groundswell of public discontent on issues like immigration, offering the party a foothold in the European Parliament. The subsequent entry into state parliaments, beginning with Saxony and culminating in representation across the majority of Germany's states by 2017, underscored a seismic shift in the political landscape. The federal election of 2017 was a watershed moment for the AFT, capturing 13% of the vote. The party shattered conventional political narratives, positioning itself as the third largest party in the Bundestag and the main opposition force. This achievement reverberated throughout the corridors of power, signifying the AFT's transition from a so-called fringe movement to a central player in German politics. Allegations of racism and xenophobia were then used to ostracize the party. The AFT cannot be held accountable when economic uncertainties and anxieties, especially among those feeling marginalized by globalization and technological upheavals, welcomed the AFT narrative. The AFT cannot be held accountable if the huge influx of immigrants, particularly during the refugee crisis, unsettled Germany. The AFT cannot be held accountable when an undercurrent of fear regarding the Islamization of Germany flew through Germany and AFT positioned itself as a defender of traditional German cultural values. AFD's rise has instigated a profound calibration of German politics. It has not only polarized public discourse, but has also complicated consensus building on key policy issues. The party's presence in parliament has pressured other parties to recalibrate their position on immigration and has injected an element of unpredictability into the German political narrative. AFD is the reality check that Germany needed. If the powers that be in Germany go ahead and ban AFD, won't they be banning the wishes and hopes and aspirations of common tax-paying Germans? Who will be blamed when Germans come out in streets to protest such an undemocratic setup? The traditional parties must wake up, smell the coffee, and read the writing on the wall. The ultra-progressive politics belongs to dustbin, and nationalism in Germany is no longer a cuss word.